like it or not, it's coming. And you'll know when it comes. It may come as a phone call in the middle of the night that forever changes your life, or in a private meeting with your boss as you realize you are being let go, or as you sit across from the school counselor who's pointing to your child's file, or as a flashback of abuse that you experienced as a child. It may be in the I have something awful to tell you talk from your spouse, or the I don't have to obey you anymore remark from your teenager, or the you need to check into a treatment center now comment from your therapist. Whatever it is, it's coming, and it's called adversity. And for some of you sitting here right now, for some of you watching me online right now, you will receive just small doses of it, while others of you receive unthinkable amounts. And I don't know why that is, but I do know that Jesus warns us about it. Pastor Dave read it just a moment ago, but Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. Adversity will come your way, regardless of your race, age, gender, wealth, spiritual training. Jesus says, in this life, you will encounter loss, betrayal, tragedy, heartbreak. It's coming. And of course, when adversity strikes, I think we're all aware of the fact that people react. And people will react in a variety of different ways to adversity. For example, almost initially, people react with shock. Two weeks ago, my middle son, Stephen, called me and was talking to my wife, Carla, and me on the phone. And he said that because of uh, financial issues at his company, uh, that he had been rift. He had lost his job. And we could tell as we were talking to him, he was stunned by that news. Now, he's fine. He, he, he has several job interviews lined up. He's got, he knows God has a plan. But in that moment, he was in shock. Another common reaction to adversity is blaming, where we like to say, this isn't fair. Why me? Why my life? Why my marriage? Whatever. And so we don't like to blame ourselves, so we blame other people. We might blame our boss or our coworker or our parents or our spouse or our friends, whoever's an easy target. Another common reaction to adversity is withdrawal. When dealing with adversity, you may be tempted to isolate yourself from family members and friends and pretty much everybody else in the world. And yet when you live in that kind of misery and self-pity, I'll tell you right now, it's an awful place to live. Another common reaction to adversity is something called anger. You know, we know that. It's never pretty because then you want somebody else to pay. You want somebody else to hurt as much as you hurt. You want to lash out and get even. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes people will react or you might react to adversity with Shame. And you might feel shame when you realize you've played a role in this problem that you are now trying to deal with. And so you're embarrassed. You feel awful about your actions, which created that mess. Of course, if you keep going down that spiraled path, eventually, when dealing with adversity, uh, you can fall into depression. You know, that sense of utter despair where you find yourself thinking, why even go on? Now, as I share some of these more common reactions to adversity, my guess is, again, some of you here, some of you watching online, know exactly what I'm talking about because you are there right now. Others of you, you're not, but it might be just around the corner. So the question is this, what do you do to overcome adversity? What do you do when it strikes? Because it will strike. Well, remember what Jesus said, that passage from John 16, 33. Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. But he doesn't stop there. Look at what he says. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus is saying, don't give up. Hang in there. Just as I have the power to overcome all the adversities of this world, with my help, you can too. And you can when you, first of all, know what you believe. 
When dealing with problems or adversity in your life, it is critical that you are crystal clear on what it is that you as a child of God believe based on God's word. And from God's word, there are several basic spiritual truths that when you face adversity, you're going to want to cling to. First spiritual truth is this. God is never the author of evil. I know he's an easy target. He's easy to blame when bad things happen in your life. But the Bible is very clear on who is the author of evil and who is the author of life. Listen to what Jesus says here in John 10. He says, the thief, okay, that's the devil, the author of evil, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. So so when someone or something is ripped out of your life, when when an accident uh, creates chaos and heartbreak in your world, when somebody hates you or slanders you or mistreats you, let there be no mistake as to who it is that ultimately is behind all of that destruction. It is the author of evil. It's Satan. Now that said, when grace and love and forgiveness flow into your life, when someone cuts you a break and offers you a second chance, when they encourage you, when they support you, when they serve you, make no mistake as to who is behind those blessings. And it's God. Right? It's either one or the other. So know what you believe. And that first truth that you need to believe with all your heart, especially when facing adversity, is that God is never, never the author of evil. Second spiritual truth is that God limits the severity of adversity. I know it may not always seem like it, but he does. He really does. He limits the amount, the severity of the adversity that comes your way. And he does it so that in his power, you can overcome it. I love what it says, what God says in Isaiah 43. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. For I am the Lord your God. You are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. Isn't that amazing? God is saying that, yes, adversity is going to come into your life, but it will only come in an amount that you can handle so that with God's strength, you can overcome it. In 1 John, um, and, and so what does that mean? It means that when adversity comes, you can survive it in Christ's power. You can survive it. 1 John 4, verse 4 says, the one who is in you, that's Jesus, is greater than the one who is in the world. That's the devil. Or Paul says in Philippians 4, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So again, you need to know what you believe if you're going to face adversity. And you want to know and believe this second truth, that God limits the amount of adversity that comes into your life, that in the power of Christ, it is survivable. Third spiritual truth is that God is with you in your troubles. When dealing with personal tragedy or or some kind of adversity, It's easy to react and say, where's God? God, where are you? And why would you choose now to feel as scarce as you feel? And yet, look at what it says here in Psalm 34. The Lord is, what's the next word? Say it, everybody. Close. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Or how about these familiar words from Psalm 23? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Right, God is right there with you in your darkest days and he's there with you because he cares about you. If you were to walk in my office, you would see a desk, some chairs, a bunch of books. But if you were to look a little bit more closely, you would also see some things that hold special meaning to me. One is a painting that my daughter-in-law gave me a number of years ago. It's a painting of Jesus with a crown of thorns. He's beaten, he's bloodied, he's bruised and he's standing from a distance looking at planet Earth. And I love that painting for a couple of reasons. First, because it reminds me that Jesus gets me. He understands my pain, my darkness, my disappointments. But also because it reminds me that he loves me. 
right? That he was willing to die to pay the penalty for my sin, just like he was willing to pay for your sin and the sins of the world. Jesus was willing to take the punishment that we deserve for everything that we've ever done wrong, to take the punishment for every mistake, every failure, every act of disobedience we've ever committed. And, and as a, he, he lovingly gave his life for us. And when we, when we confess and repent of our sin, God promises to cleanse and forgive us as a gift of his grace. Now, I have other things in my office that are, that hold special meaning to me as well. Things that remind me that God is there for me in my darkest days, uh, that I can tell him anything. He's available. He's always listening. And maybe you have something tangible like that too. I don't know. If you don't, you have to know what you believe. Please understand that. To face adversity, you need to know what you believe. And this third truth reminds you that God is right there with you in that darkness of your time of trouble. Fourth spiritual truth is that God can bring good out of your hardships. This may be a challenge for you to accept and to believe, especially when you are in the middle of some heart-wrenching tragedy, but God is committed. Listen to me. God is committed to working something worthwhile and good out of the difficulty in which you may be, that, where you, that you might be facing. God promises this. Look at this, Romans 8, in all things, all things, God works for the good of those who love him. I know, again, it can be hard to believe. I know I've gone through some junky times in my life. I'm like, this is all bad. There's nothing good that can come out of this. And maybe you know what I'm talking about because you've been beaten up financially or beaten up relationally or beaten up emotionally. Some of you have had very hard lives, and I'm sorry, but don't miss this point. God can bring good out of those moments. I don't know what that good looks like for you, it may be that in that moment, God helps you to see Christ more clearly. It may be in that moment that God helps you to become more sensitive to other people who are struggling. I don't know. All I know is that God can use, the, uh, he can work good out of your hardships. So in the face of adversity, you want to you know what you believe, okay? You want to know what you believe and, and um, you want to cling to those truths tooth and nail. You want to know on, um, and, and, and those truths are that Jesus, um, that God is never the author of evil. Second, that he is the, um, th that he will limit the amount or severity of adversity. He, that he will always be with you in those dark, darkest days of trouble and that he can actually bring good out of, out of your hardships. Know what you believe. Second, in the face of adversity, you also want to know how to grieve. And, and here's why I say that. When people go through times of adversity, they tend to fall into and then they get stuck. Okay, they, they stay and they get stuck in a spirit of gloom and anguish. And because they don't face it, they don't grieve it, they don't move beyond it. And so it's important for you to give to God your hardships, so that you, and that you grieve over it so that you can get up and get on with your life. If it doesn't happen, I get that. So if that's the case, you're still stuck. Let me share with you this amazing truth. You ready? Here it is. There is a tomorrow and a good God rules over it. There is a tomorrow and a good God rules over it. And that power. Say that to the person sitting next to you. Go ahead. Just turn to the person sitting next to you and say, there is a good God there is a tomorrow and a good God rules over it. Yeah, and get it right. <laughs> there, is, there is a tomorrow. And I get to live in that too. So there is a, God, there is a tomorrow and a good God rules over it. And here's the thing. The, 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 the amazing thing is that this good God promises that there will come a point in time when there will be no more defeat or hardship or grief or, or loss or betrayal. There will be a point where that will come to an end. And that is something you can cling to. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13, we don't want you to grieve like other people who have no hope. No, as followers of Jesus, we know, don't we? that as long as God is on the throne, there is always hope. Amen? Amen. Amen. And nowhere is this more important for you to understand and to remember 
than when it comes to your sinful past. And the reason I say that is because there are times when you are hit with adversity and you are tempted to think that God is punishing you for a bad choice or mistake you made in the past. And while it is true that you may have to deal with some of those consequences of those bad choices and mistakes that you've made, understand this. God is not punishing you. Why? Because he already punished Jesus on the cross. That's why. So it doesn't matter how disgraceful your actions. It doesn't matter how shameful your choices. You can trust that when you confess your sins, when you trust that Jesus is your savior from those sins, when you believe that he personally died for you, you can trust that God will wipe away your guilt. You can trust that and believe that because Jesus died, God will forgive you and he will restore you and he will claim you as his own and he will remind you that your eternity with him in heaven is secure. And here's the best part. It's his gift to you. There you go. It's his gift to you. So, Learn how to grieve through those times of adversity so you don't get stuck there, but so you can get up and get on with your life. Remember, there is a tomorrow and a good God rules over it. And he's got good plans for you. I realize that some of you may have taken some hits in your life, but there is li- there's still life to be lived. So let me just challenge you to mark this day, today, July 9th. Let me challenge you to mark this day as the day where you're going to say, enough. I'm walking into tomorrow. I'm not going to stay in yesterday. I'm walking into hope and God's grace. And I'm not going to let misery and defeat hold me in its grip. I'm going to trust God and his word. And I'm going to trust in in the promises of God's word. Like, Like David says in the 23rd Psalm, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Know how to grieve. But third, when it comes to facing adversity, not only do you need to be clear on what you believe and also how to grieve, you also need to know on whom to lean. And certainly your first choice should be God, right? Of course, of course. It's his peace, his love, his strength, his comfort. He, he, it is available to each and every one of you, all of you. In, in uh, Nahum 1 verse 7, it says, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Or how about this familiar invitation from Jesus? Matthew 11, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus is saying, go ahead, lean on me. Or Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Over and over and over again in the Bible, you are invited to lean on God in your times of adversity. So please do. But also understand that along with leaning on God, God provides you with other people. He loves to minister to you through other people that he's placed in your life, family members, friends, other brothers and sisters in Christ, right? He loves to minister to you you through those other people in times of adversity. Think about it. Jesus, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, about to face the cross for the sins of the world, for your sins and mine, Look at what he does in Mark 14. Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. What did Jesus do? He leaned on Peter, James, and John, didn't he? And it helped him. It helped him. And it can help you too. It can help you to have people around you who are going to care about you and who are going to pray for you and encourage you and support you and love you and remind you of God's loving presence and God's power. And I realize that when you are in a time of adversity, it's tempting to say, everything's fine. I'm great. But understand, those people that God has placed in your life, they can be a powerful blessing in a tangible way to help you face and overcome adversity when it hits. So yeah, you want to learn or or know who on whom to lean. At the beginning of my message, I mentioned to you that adversity is just around the corner. 
and it is. So you want to know what you believe, okay? Know those truths and cling to them tooth and nail. You wanna know uh, how to grieve so that you can get up and get on with your life and after you've grieved and not stay stuck in a messy pit of self-pity. And you want to know on whom you can leave and, uh, lean. And certainly you want to lean on God, but also lean on those people that he's placed in your life with whom you can share your heartbreak and tragedy and through whom you can experience God's healing touch. Okay, I, I, I tell you what, you get those three things working in your life, you, guess what? You will be stronger, more stable, and more resistant to adversity when it strikes. You will be able to overcome it. Or as Paul says, uh, in the context of adversity in Romans 8, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us, right? More than conquerors. Why? Because in Christ, we are overcomers. We are overcomers. So let me challenge you in a couple of ways. First, let me challenge you to memorize John 16, In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Commit that, that verse to memory. Second, review those four spiritual truths that we went through so you know what you believe. Right, So that you believe that, yep, God is never the author of evil. Uh, he will uh, limit the, the severity of adversity. He will be with me in my troubles, and he will bring good out of my hardships. And then third, be available when others face adversity. It's nice to know that there are people around you who can be there, to, who've got your back, right? People you can lean on in your time of difficulty. Well, make sure you tell those same people you've got their back that they can lean on you when they are going through a time of adversity. And then here's the thing, be there, right? Yeah, talk is cheap. So be alert, be watching, be ready. All right, well, let's pray about this. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful that you have in your heart the love and the desire to help us overcome those different areas of our life that can leave us absolutely overwhelmed. This morning, we looked at adversity, and throughout this series, we're going to look at other areas that can challenge us, but today, we thank you that you showed us how we can stand strong and survive the hardships of life, adversity. Lord, be the strength of our lives this day, this week, this year, for the rest of our days. We love you. We pray all this in the holy and mighty name of Jesus, and all God's people said, amen, amen.